Hey, what's up everyone? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use panels in Adobe software, all software, because all Adobe software uses this idea of panels and workflows slash workspaces. And what they really are is they give you the ability to customize the, your program to however you want to use it. Adobe has so many tools that if they laid the tools out for you that it wouldn't be the most efficient for every single person. So what they've done is they've taken every tool and they've modulized it so that that tool is able to be put anywhere inside the program and used anywhere inside the program. So instead of locking them into different places, like think um, back when they had Windows Movie Player or uh, Movie Maker, you couldn't move anything around in there. It was all locked to a specific place inside the program. Here though, you can move everything around. So let's just get started. Uh, I have a couple of programs open and I'm gonna show you how each Adobe program uses um, layers or uh, panels and how they can be used really effectively. So the first one is After Effects and you'll see that this is its default setup, which I agree is actually very good for most of the stuff you're gonna do. It has the giant timeline in the bottom um, put in this way because keyframing is really big in after Effects. So you want to be able to see your keyframes as you move through. And if it's up here in the top left, um, where the keyframes and effects are like Premiere, it won't do, you won't have as much control as you need to have. Now, the thing with panels is that everything is changeable, movable, draggable. If you have a second screen, you can grab it, you can drag it over to your second screen really, really easily. I have a second screen, it's over there right now, you see. Um, but, and then it takes it off the bottom, so you maybe you could have the picture over here and edit the timeline over here. I've seen a lot of people do that, especially with like um, a vertical screen that has a really tall up and down to it. They can work with, you know, look at 60, 70 layers at the exact same time. We can drag it right here back. Um, yeah, uh, put it here. So now this one has kind of priority. It has a bigger area to the left. I mean, we have all the panels over here. Effects and presets is a very important one to have open. Um, Whenever you first load it, it's going to start to load because it has to load them all in. But I always have that panel open, and I'll even have that panel sometimes, like I was said earlier, over on the right screen because to have them all visually there really helps me out. Or I'll put it on the bottom like this so I can see them all. And so, yeah, panels, they can be moved, they can be dragged, they can be made larger, they can be made smaller. You can change it to however you want. And the cool thing about them is that you can save them into a workspace. So right here, save changes of the workspace or save as a new workspace. So you could save this exact setup right here as a new workspace. And now every time you want to go back, you could just click on it. So for example, um, essentials is what comes with it. And so if I just click reset to save layout, it goes back to what it was at the starting, what Adobe thought that it should be um, when we started. You can see this a little bit different than when I had because over time I've just been slowly adjusting things and I kind of took away the right panel for this one and made the effects panel really long, um, changed it up a little bit. However, you can do a drop down right here and you can see that Adobe has created a couple of these for you. So uh, they think that this is the best setup for animation where you have um, a really large, I guess, ability to control the, the frames right here. It makes that really large and then effects and then it kind of closes everything out. Um, it has basically the other setup just with the, that change over there. Then you go into like effects and it does slight changes for that, motion tracking exactly the same paint now paint is a little bit different they think that um, since you're gonna be painting on individual layers they, they have the layer thing open so you can see what it looked like in the original you can see what the paint looks like and then you can see what it looks like over the whole thing again thousands and thousands of ways to make this um, to come up with it on your own Premiere is exactly the same uh, it's slightly different in the fact that its panels focus on the video right here and then the timeline is down here and then the effects are in the top left and up here are where your workspaces are. Um, color is completely different. So if you click on the color tab, when it loads here in a second, um, it's gonna open up Lumetri over here. So let's just, let's go back to editing, which is its default one. And we can just go ahead and project down here, import a little footage, uh, this one. Click open. And so now we have some footage in here. If we drag that on the timeline, it'll create ourselves a new sequence. And then we go into color, you'll see that it brings up the whole color panel up here. And then you have the footage here. The timeline moves from over here to slightly into here. Your sources are down here, but what it's actually focusing on is the colors because now you're in color. And then you have Lumetri automatically added to the thing so that you can begin to edit the coloring really, really well. 
effects, it'll change it around, give you a priority on the effects up here so you can really see the keyframes when you're doing effects. Audio brings up the levels, um, makes the timeline really big so you can see the time, the uh, audio down here. And yeah, so all these, I mean, you can click all panels and it'll just open up every single panel in here. Um, as you can see it, they're all loading up and then being put into the side. But yeah, so that's really important for the panels. Uh, really awesome way to customize it yourself. Um, so yeah, that's Premiere. And then finally, I wanted to show you, so this is Illustrator and this is my custom panel. I call graphic design. Um, Graphic design, at least the graphic design I like to do, I like to use a lot of gradients. I like to use a lot of, um, I guess you can say like uh, layer styles. So I like to maybe cut an object in half and then darken it or burn it and then screen it or lighten it. And so I kind of have all that stuff right up here ready to go on the left over here and then on the right over here. Um, right here I can just switch it around. So when I'm editing in the middle, Everything is opened up so that I can just click, click, move, click, move, click, move. You know, I don't, not, I'm not looking through things to find what I need. And to do graphic design, all I need are these right here. So I save that as a personal layout. And now every time I need that layout, um, I can start in Essentials and do normal stuff. But every time I need to do graphic design, I just click on that. It opens up this panel right over here. It rearranges all these panels, and I am good to go. I can just get right into the work instead of having to rearrange the panels every time. So yeah, that's a very quick introduction on panels. Panels are really important in the entire Adobe um, atmosphere, I guess you could say, uh, the whole suite. Every single program uses panels that um, has some creative juice behind it. They allow you to customize, they allow you to personalize, and they allow you to basically edit at the speed of thought so that you have everything in front of you that you need in front of you and things that you don't need can disappear so you can only focus on what you wanna do. Thanks everyone for joining me for this little tutorial. Subscribe to see more Adobe related content. If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and throw those in the comments below. And until next time guys, see ya.